And moving into the main topic this week, we're going to be talking to you about how tokenized stocks actually work and their benefits. Now, earlier this episode, Kyle, you gave FTX your company of the week for doing exactly that, tokenizing over 25 different stocks, making it possible for international investors to trade through the FTX crypto platform, tokenized versions of GameStop, Tesla, Coinbase, and many, many other popular stocks. So Kyle, let's get into it. Let's tell our users exactly what are tokenized stocks. Well, I think tokenized stocks come from this idea of not everyone around the world having access to the traditional stock market. Certainly, we've seen how the stock market has caught all of the headlines with all of these crazy movements in the traditional markets. And I think that more people want access to it. So security tokens allow for access to that through creating derivatives of these publicly traded stocks that anyone around the world could be able to invest in, which comes with a lot of benefits. Obviously, if you're on FTX, you've got 24 seven trading, which is revolutionary when you look at the stock market that only trades nine to four. People in crypto have gotten very accustomed to trading 24 seven with all of their cryptos. Why can't we do that for the traditional stock market, especially for somebody trading in Asia or in Europe or, or somewhere where that, that time zone doesn't really make sense. Even in California, you. they got to get up pretty early. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So on top of that, we've got instant settlement, which really provides that infrastructural upgrade that we've seen that's caused some serious issues in the traditional markets that really can allow for firms to actually settle their ledger, figure out exactly who owns what right away to be able to deal with some of those underlying problems. On top of that, we talked about international access. This is big, not only just for more people to be able to buy and sell, but this is more liquidity that gets pumped into the system, more people that can buy and sell these shares, which results in more liquidity and, and presumably higher prices for a lot of these different assets. One of the other cool things that you did mention earlier as well with FTX is that they're enabling you to actually invest in a fraction of a share. Yeah. We saw Robinhood as well do this in the United States, but again, that's built on an old school infrastructure, not using any blockchain. In this case, FTX is using the blockchain in order to do exactly that fractional ownership for investors around the world to be able to now invest easily into stocks like Tesla, which are several hundred dollars at a time, which converted into some currencies is pretty much nearly unreachable for certain people unless tools like fractional ownership enable them the access to the stock. Absolutely, just increasing liquidity, just making it more accessible for anyone around the world to buy and sell. It makes total sense and, and from Binance and FTX's perspective, they're, they're doing millions of trading volume across all their listed assets, all already, this is still a pretty new concept. Now, how is Binance and FTX, how are they pulling something off like this? We know in the past that some other people have tried to do something similar and sometimes the SEC came after them and shut them down. Obviously, these two multi-billion dollar exchanges have the resources and the breadth to figure it out. Uh, Kyle, tell us, how do they make it work? Well, you know, when we're talking about dealing with the SEC, the first thing that both of these did, and we, we hinted at this earlier, is that they don't allow U.S. investors to participate. Unfortunately, with the U.S. jurisdiction being so you know, constricting on some of these opportunities, that, that's the big one. The SEC doesn't really care that much about international trading as much as they care about protecting U.S. investors. So that's the first step. And once they get past that, they, they have a lot more opportunity. But the way that these tokenized stocks work is that you have a, you have a private fund manager that essentially they're based out of Germany in both cases here, but it could be somewhere else for, for another exchange that potentially launches a similar similar service. And this, this private fund manager essentially just buys up shares on the, the public markets and then is able to issue that, that derivative to Binance and manage that ledger on their behalf. So Binance is essentially trading, or, or, or FTX or any of these platforms, essentially trading a, a mirrored share to what this private holding company is actually managing on their behalf. That's right. It's, a, as you said, a mirror, a derivative. It is not actually the Tesla or Coinbase stock trading itself. You have and no that's, voting rights, that's nothing right. like that. And that's actually why you don't see a supply or a market cap or anything like that on these websites. They're just trading, as, again, a, a mirrored product of it. So it's a fascinating use case. Again, the difference being is that they can leverage all of the benefits of blockchain technology, instant settlement, 24-7 access, easier international access and fractional ownership, all because the derivative itself 
itself is tokenized. And that's why we can expect a lot more of this uh, to happen in the future. I think we're going to see more cryptocurrency exchanges try to, to do something similar. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more competition from the old school, uh, from the traditional marketplaces now say, hey, we may now be forced to kind of enable more blockchain-based solutions because otherwise everyone's going to go and trade on Binance. Yeah, this is really like digitizing capital markets, right? Providing some of that uh, facelift to the, the front-end infrastructure and some of the back-end. We're getting there. Um, it's not a security token. As we talked about, it's a mirrored asset, so you don't get the self-custody benefits and some of these other opportunities. But there are some cool potential things to look forward to in the future right. that uh, Herwig, you and I were talking about in detail before. Yeah, I mean, imagine if you could use your Apple stock uh, and stake that because it's so valuable and people are willing to, to let you collateralize against it or use it out for a loan or use it in other kind of DeFi protocols and projects, right? Once it's enabled to kind of be in your own personal custody, you can go ahead and take it to these different financial services and solutions. And that's also very exciting. But of course, given the fact that they are still tokenized stock that's traded in public markets here in the United States, States, which means they're governed by the SEC, those partnerships would still have to enforce all the right compliance measures to make sure that's possible. But we do believe that is absolutely possible so that you can, again, use your Apple stock to now go ahead and take out a loan instantly, uh, just like we saw actually in the example of Jonah Schulman's newsletter, What's Drippin', the security token market newsletter. He did give that example earlier. You need to go and buy something on a holiday for Christmas. Guess what? Wall Street's going to be closed, but FTX won't be. So no. you can go ahead and cash out your Apple stock and go ahead and buy your mom that sweet gift. So those are some of the exciting future capabilities beyond what's already be being brought to the table, I think, by FTX and Binance, which I do believe is already novel and innovative. Absolutely, yeah. Collateralized lending is cool because you know you could certainly sell. The 24-7 markets are exciting, but this this idea of collateralized lending is neat because you don't necessarily have to sell. You could be long on a position. You could have some Amazon shares that you don't necessarily want to sell, but you need some liquidity, or you need some cash in the meantime. So you could essentially take a couple thousand dollars worth of your stock, put it into a protocol and be able to get that cash out. And then once you pay that cash, you get your stock back at whatever that price that you determined from the beginning. So you still get to experience the upside of those shares as long as you were able to pay back the collateral and the loan that you actually took out without actually needing to sell it. We've all had those situations, maybe some of you even with Bitcoin or some of these other things where it's like, oh, you know, I sold too early but I need the liquidity. So these, these opportunities are pretty cool. And uh, it may also force the traditional players, as you mentioned, to have to upgrade. We see aftermarket trading happening now a little bit. Some of these platforms are allowing more than just the nine to four or some of these other you know, opportunities. We'll have to see how the traditional financial service providers you have to upgrade in order to stay competitive against some of these other options. Absolutely, as they say in tech, the genie is out of the bottle. So we'll see where we go from here. And with that, Kyle, I think we can wrap up our show this week. I want to thank you all for listening or watching, for those of you who are tuning into our YouTube series now. Uh, and of course, we want to remind you that everything we talk about here on the show, it's sourced from stomarket.com slash news. You can go and read all the articles we talk about there or go check out the trading pricing of all of these different tokens that Kyle mentioned on his segments as well. And of course, uh, you know, as a reminder, we do have our Clubhouse event every week on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. That's where Kyle and I, we break down the show with a lot of other guests, including CEOs from other issuance companies, other issuers in the space, exchanges, lawyers, and many more. Come and ask questions, come hang out, and come to you know, take part in the second half, if you will, yeah. of the podcast. Absolutely. It's a great time, and thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week.